come through, fam. We lit and we chill. And today we're going to talk about David Ayer's Suicide Squad. It's going to get the release the air cut campaign treatment, just like uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League. We got that announcement last week and it's coming out on HBO Max next year. So that's awesome. But now we begin the fight for release the air cut. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about um, David Ayer, the director, um, his support for the campaign and he's sharing little tweets here and there that's kind of building up the excitement for that. And then we're going to talk about a little uh, heated exchange between Birds of Prey director Kathy Yan and the YouTuber Grace Randolph. So if that sounds good to you, why not click that subscribe button before you've even had a chance to watch this video? <laughs> so how do you get involved in the Release the Air Cut campaign? Uh, let's find out. So it says here, trending event week one. Following the incredible success of the November 2019 Snyder Cut trending event, we would like to show the same love and passion for the artistic integrity and freedom for the director, cast and crew of David Ayer's Suicide Squad. So we've got four steps to your mission. Number one, at these times from June the 1st. So PST, 10 a.m. EST, 1 p.m. UK, 6 p.m. CET, 7 p.m. India, 11.30 p.m. and China, 2 a.m. Number two, use the hashtag release the air cut plus the character of the day. So June the 1st is Enchantress. So that's today, that's what we're going to be uh, tweeting about. Number three, use a GIF, a pic, a video of that character. And number four, of course, tag our friends, at and and HBO Max. And of course, the Twitter account, RTAirCutSS, are going to be running a competition for their favourite tweet. And if you win, you'll be rewarded with this t-shirt. Meanwhile, David Ayer, he has been tweeting quite a bit about what his intentions were for the Suicide Squad, what he wanted the movie to be. So he's building up that discussion. Uh, take this for example, he was uh, congratulating Boss Logic on this dope as if poster um, that Boss Logic uh, came up with. It's like, uh, you know, you can see Katana there. She's been mind controlled by Enchantress, who's standing behind her. And in the sword, you can see all the different members of the, the squad. A uh, nice composition, I quite like it. He also retweeted the Release the Air Cut Twitter account. Someone said that I started a joke trailer is the greatest isolated piece of SS content. I would agree, I was just watching the trailer again the other day. David Ayer replied, this trailer nailed the tone and intention of the film I made. Methodical, layered, complex, beautiful and sad. After the BBS reviews shell-shocked the leadership at the time and the success of Deadpool, my soulful drama was beaten into a comedy. Maddie asked, tell us the story here. Uh, David was like, this was reshot because the tone was too dark. My first act was a normally constructed film. I took my inspiration from Nolan. There were real scenes with incredible acting between Jared and Margot. Joker was terrifying. Harley was complex. Too dark. What else would people expect from the Joker of all people? Imagine if Todd Phillips' film The Joker was reshot and recut because it was too dark. This is exactly what happened to Suicide Squad. Anyone who says my cut did not work owes me to say it directly to me. Of course you've got the haters jumping in with uh, comments like Justice League had an entire change in director and plot details. Suicide Squad's editor might have changed but Trailer Park was still working with footage filmed under Ayer's control. David Ayer replied, Wrong! Now here's when things get a little spicy because Grace Randolph decided to enter the chat. She's like, I definitely want to see David Ayer's Suicide Squad, but only after uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League has been released on HBO Max. And she's done a whole video about this, about the cons of releasing the air cut before the Snyder cut and how that would be a bad business decision and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's for everything good that Grace Randolph has to say, she can also follow things up with one of our bizarre hot takes. Grace, I don't mind if my cut is seen in five years. 
I simply want the best version of my work represented. Zack deserves this wonderful opportunity he's been given by HBO Max and AT&T. It's all love. Kathy Yan also came in. I'm so sorry this happened to you, David. I know the pain. Now this has also got people talking to like what? The Birds of Prey, the theatrical cut, is that another Warner Brothers product interference from the studio? Is there a Yan cut out there? And here comes the heated exchange between Grace Randolph and Kathy Yan. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! I told you guys, massive ratios largely to take out take pics. Storyline and add more action via Chad Stahelski. I'm surprised Yan would jump on this bandwagon though. Birds of Prey very well reviewed by critics and has a very strong fan base that vehemently defends film as is DCEU. Excuse me, you have no idea what you're talking about. It's fascinating you would deem to try when you weren't part of the process whatsoever. No reporter is ever part of the process. They're different jobs. Everything I reported is common knowledge. With many insiders, I brought it to the public. I gave your film a good review and I said here you have a strong fan base. So logically, there should be no problem here. And I thank you for your support, but let's set the record straight. There were never dick pics. You peddling a pedo rumor is not journalism. Peddling any gossip is not journalism. I know, I was one. Multiple reporters confirmed that story after I reported it said it was great and should be kept in film and didn't like it taken out. And dick pits aren't pedophilia. Plus, as a former journalist, you should realize the optics of not pretending you have a suddenly better yen cut. One of Grace Randolph's simps decided to join in. As far as I can tell, rather than dick pics, it was pictures of a naked statue of Roman, so all Yan had to say was that she was misinterpreting the plot, point and explain. The storyline was that you could see Roman's dick on the statue in the picture in the diamond, and he was upset it looked small, so that's why he was so fixated on getting it back. A picture of a statue's dick, especially in this context, is a dick pic. This is not true. There has never been any discussion around the size of Roman's dick. I can't believe I even have to write that. The original script called for an image of Roman as Michelangelo's David. You know, art. If that's a dick pic, then the Louvre is full of them. Meanwhile, articles like the one below are written off on your scoops. Congratulations on being the scum of journalism. You know, Kathy Yan, she only made one film before Birds of Prey inexperienced when it comes to these big budget movies. I don't know what happened, maybe she let Warner Brothers take control of the movie. We can see from the concept art that's came out recently for Birds of Prey, uh, the costumes they were definitely much better, more comic accurate you could say. Now, I'm not saying costumes would have made the film better but it would have been one less thing hurting the film when it comes to the fans disappointment in the film. But I think we can all agree that these bloggers and scoopers, they don't like being wrong and it's kind of embarrassing that they can go after a director and argue with them <laughs> in full view of everyone on Twitter. Just take the L grace and keep quiet. So click like because you know I'm right. Let me know in the comments below. If you care, you can share. You smash that mother effing subscribe button and then you click that bell or go to hell. So until next time my knuckleheads, I'm Shorty and you're not. Ta-ta.